God I, only brought, I only brought up the subject, now I gotta talk about it. Fuck! Oh, what a jackass. <laughs> Fuck! What kind of jackass makes me talk about the topic I brought up? God. I know, right? Jesus Christ. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Press Start Podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Quick Freeze 4. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's a broken! Now I've got your power! Don't worry, I'll handle the bad guys. And I am here with, as always, my two wonderful co-hosts, Mr. Nostalgic Dan One. One day... Revenge for my hardcore safe data. You're not really gonna try and play dumb now, are you? After all you've done to my body. And how are you, Dan? I am fantastic. <laughs> Wait a minute. Before we go on, I I have to say, why are we fantastic every single episode? This is getting insane. Because we're just that fantastic. It just, it makes no sense. Like, All this pre-conversation <laughs> stuff before recording is fantastic. <laughs> really? I, I kind of consider it, like, awesome, but not really fantastic. It's awesomely oh. fantastic. Awesomely fantastic? All right. There you go. <laughs> and always, we're always with our wonderful Mr. Enthusiastic, Mr. The Purple Grimace himself, Techno Squeak. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Why doesn't he just tell you what he wants? Because he's insane. Finish him. Get a load of this. Yeah. How are how are you, Techno? <laughs> oh, I'm laughing every minute. Of really? This. Yes. Is it because we're awesomely fantastic? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, it is. All right. Well, why don't we start off with the uh, the games we've been playing? And Mr. Techno Squeak, you go first. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay, been playing some East Books One and Two Chronicles. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? Wise. It's pronounced wise. Okay. Get it. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely wise. Wise why? one and two. Why is yeah, you? Why is you playing that game, man? Why? Yeah. Why <laughs> are you playing those games? <laughs> because they're good. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. All right, go. All right, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Mario Kart Seven. Yeah. Yay! Good, good. <laughs> and uh, some Blue Stinger on the Dreamcast. And uh, some Grandia Two. Yeah. Good job. You're going to get a sideways yay on that one. What's a sideways yay? It's like... <laughs> Chewbacca approves. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Some quality and stuff. John thing. Oh, and Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Since I got... My arcade stick back. Back? Well, where'd, it, where'd it go? It was uh, at my grandmother's, and then, you know, you I moved back uh, okay. to my grandmother's. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. All right. So, I'm going to choose... Eating meaty money mo <laughs> Okay, go quick freeze. Um I finished uh, Sonic Generations for the Xbox three sixty. Good game. Um very short. Uh I think I mentioned this before. I do 
of the modern Sonic levels way more than the classic Sonic levels. But uh, it's a good game. I really enjoyed it. I recommend it only to like hardcore Sonic fans, though. Yeah, no one liked Techno. <laughs> He's not what? hardcore enough. <laughs> Techno, you really hated that game? No! What? Dan just said well, you hated that game. No, I did not. What? He just said that. Remember in past episodes when I said, it fucking rocks? I No, I don't remember that. I don't remember. Yeah, Dan just said you hate Sonic. What's wrong with you? He's not hardcore enough. Come on, oh man. God. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> what else are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I played a little bit of the Halo Anniversary Collection. Uh, I finally beat... Mission 5, me and my friend have been trying to beat this mission wow. for, like, over a month now. And uh, it's been kind of difficult because we're basically playing on, like, his schedule, and he's been busy with, like, work, and he has a kid and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the level is, like, ridiculously long. It took us, like, three hours to beat this level because we're playing all legendary. And um, so we finally beat that, and we're just like, all right, we're done. Taking a break. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's the one where you're trying to get into the uh, the control room in that, like, snowy level. That's the mission we were trying to beat. And, um, as always, for, the, like, the last, was it, like, four, five, six weeks now? <laughs> Mario Kart. Yay. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be playing this game until, like, Final Fantasy XIII 2 comes out. Yeah. Because it's, like, every time I'm home or just... It uh, it's always with me. I'm always playing it. So yeah, whenever you're bored, like just randomly, it's like you can hop on there, and there's usually someone like always on there willing to play. Yeah. Well, right now I'm trying to get the the ten thousand golden coins to get the golden glider, and I'm almost there. I got about um, eight thousand five hundred, yeah. and I'm also trying to get uh, the ten thousand VR points so I can get the golden cart. That one I still have some work on because I only have like a thousand three hundred. So, but I'm trying. Like I said, I'm trying to get those. Just having fun. Just yeah, it's it's a great game. I've been saying that for weeks. So, and I'm gonna be saying that for future weeks. So, <laughs> and um, that's about it. What do the gold parts do? Does it like really increase like your speed well, or whatever? I don't know. Well. I've only unlocked the golden wheels, and the golden wheels increase your speed and your acceleration, but they make your handling really, really crappy. That sucks. So, uh, I assume, like, the golden glider will make you, like, lighter. Uh, maybe the golden cart will, you know, bring up your defense. I don't know, because I haven't unlocked those yet. And, uh, like, I haven't gone any, like, forums to find out what they actually do, but I just assume they improve different qualities of your racing that the wheels do not so what's the rankings like on there i haven't been on there in a while i know pete got dethroned he needs to get back on there uh right now i think uh mike sinister moon is in first place at 1400 points uh i believe i'm in second with uh either 1200 points and then holly's right behind me with like 11 70 points, so I think she's very close. She's only like 50 points behind me. And then fourth place is Pete Dorr. Nice. And you, I actually checked, you're catching up. You're yeah, like, I, I saw like, I cracked like that top, like I can see my little face now on there. Yeah, you're like fifth or sixth or something. You're like totally like getting up there like really quickly. I know, I've hardly even played the game. Like all the times I played with you guys, that's like how much I played the game. So, yeah. How many points do you have? I have no idea. I think it's like almost 500 or something. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Like, that kind of tells me what the other people <laughs> below you have, then. <laughs> sure. okay. All right, well, what have you been playing, then? Guess what? What? Mario Kart. <laughs> no way! <laughs> How did you know? No. Of course, like, like, Kravis said, we'll probably be bringing this up, like, for future weeks to come, and can't get enough of it like i said it's just like fun to like whenever you're bored like on a weekend night or something you pop it in and play like me cliva like holly sinister we just play and join a skype call and it's a lot of fun and you just can't get enough of it it's addictive so be playing that for quite some time so really enjoying it 
I was actually playing with uh, Kevin from the Mega Man Cave the other night. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun playing with the YouTube community. It's really cool. It, it's so big. I think it, what is it now? It's up to like 200 and something. Yeah, last time I checked, it's like over like 200. It's pretty I'm, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check right now. So, Keep yeah. Talking. And besides Mario Kart, I've been, I put some more time into Darksiders on the 360. Which I'm trying to finish up because I'm really close to the end of that game, but I am enjoying that game, well, actually a lot. So, I don't know it's you know a typical like kind of Zelda kind of S clone with a really mature style, and I think I left off where where did I leave off? Where I could cross the soul gates or soul bridges or whatever. That's kind of where I left off. So I'm getting towards the end. And I picked up some random, like, Dreamcast games since, like, I haven't bought any of Dreamcast games in a long time. And this is going to be a weird game, but, like, I actually played quite a bit of this game. <laughs> and it's actually really fun, and that's Virtual Tennis. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love Virtual Tennis. It's just, I don't know what to say about it. It's, like, a really fun tennis game. It's kind of kind of arcadey in its controls, like, but it, it handles really precise. So, like, you move around, it, it works so well, like... If you press A, it's usually it always makes contact. So it works really smooth. You can, like, target shots really nicely. It's got, like, a world tour where you can do, like, all kinds of random, like, events where, you know, you got, like, crazy stuff like bowling and all these kind of mini games tucked in the world circuit to kind of improve your stats and whatever. It's actually a really fun tennis game. I can't get enough of it. And I played another Dreamcast game called Rippin' Riders Snowboarding which is kind of like a arcade snowboarding game. It's not so much about tricks, it's more of like, I guess, kind of like a racing game where, like, you have a time limit and you want to get to the checkpoints to extend your time limit. But every now and then you'll come across, like, these ramps or whatever that'll be, like, a trick section where you can do some tricks. But it's like a snowboarding game that's more of, like, emphasis on racing and less emphasis on tricks. And it's actually not too bad, pretty enjoyable. And a couple of random Game Boy games I picked up... Um, Tetris Attack, the original Tetris Attack on Game Boy, which is, you know, like, it's basically where you move blocks left and right to make, like, rows of three or more disappear, and it's actually really good, like, I guess it, the modern kind of comparison to that is, like, Planet Puzzle League on the DS, and on the N64 Pokemon Puzzle League, that's basically Tetris Attack, if you know what I mean. I'm actually really good at Tetris Attack, I play a mean game of that, so I love it. And a little bit of Fist of the North Star on the Game Boy, which is like a really weird little fighting game, but it's actually pretty fun. And recently on Steam, I just like casually picked this game up, and I bought it from the winter sale that they were having. It was like a dollar or something. And it's called Eversion, which is like a... Like, it's a platformer game, but I think it gets the award for most misleading screenshots ever for a video game. Like, if you go on Steam and look up the game, it... Like, all the screenshots kind of give you this vibe of, like, oh, it's kind of like a little kitty kind of, like, colorful platforming game. And, like, you get into it, and it's, like, it's got this concept where, like, you manipulate time, and, like, there's, like, a colorful world, and then you can change it to, like, a frozen world, and then a desolate world, which is, like, pretty much a dead world. But then, like, it, it gets to parts later on where it gets, like, really trippy and, like, really eerie and dark. Like, the music changes up to be, like, this really kind of creepy music. It's got these creepy enemies, so it's, like, really bizarre. Like, they don't show any of those screenshots, so, you know, I went into that game not expecting that. I was kind of, like, surprised when, you know, all of a sudden there's, like, these hands coming out of the ground and stuff like that. It's a really creepy game, actually. Really challenging platformer, too, so it's not easy by any means. And and on the PS3, I, <laughs> I know a lot of us who probably have a PS3 done this, but I made a Japanese PSN account. And the reason I did this is because on the Japanese PSN store, the Tales of Graces F demo went live, so I had to play that right away. So I made a Japanese PSN account and downloaded it. So I did try out, and I got to try out the Tales of Graces F demo. And from what I can tell, it just totally feels like Vesperia. I mean, visually, it, it looks beautiful. Like, it looks Vesperia-like. I noticed, like... It starts off in, like, this, I don't know what it is. It's kind of hard to tell because they don't show it for long, but it's, like, this factory kind of place. And it looked like they had some slight texture problems. Like, some of the textures look kind of off and kind of bad quality. But, 
you know, that's kind of to be expected with a game like this because you got to think, Tales of Graces was originally designed for the Nintendo Wii, so it was designed as a non-HD game, so, you know, with any games like that, like, it's kind of a challenge to upscale games to HD, and it can be perfect all the time, there's going to be, like, texture issues, so I kind of noticed a little bit of that, but when I went to the forest, the forest looked beautiful, and combat system, exactly like this area, I felt right at home. It seemed like they, I guess the new addition is like they got rid of the over limit bar, if, if you played Vesperia, you know what that is, where, you know, you can kind of overcharge and you can spam, like, magic attacks as much as you want for, like, a certain amount of time. And they kind of swapped that with, a like, accelerate mode, where you go into accelerate and it kind of slows down time a little bit, and you can, like, kind of in the same style spam all these, like, powerful attacks, but it actually slows down the time of battle. So that's really interesting, but, you know, typical, like, tells of, you know, your attacks are mapped to, like, left, right, up, down, and stuff like that. You know, nothing really drastically changed. Uh, the skits still, the skits are actually really nicely done now, where it shows, like, all the portraits, and they kind of highlight as they talk, so. I can't wait for that game, but it was awesome being able to play the demo, like, way ahead of time, so. I can't wait for that. And that's pretty much it, actually, so, yay. Yay! Yay. All right, I'm looking at the Mario Kart rankings right now, and uh, let's see, Sinister Moon is at 1387. I'm at 1177. Holly's at 1134. And Dan, it looks like you're in like seventh place, right behind Mother Wii. Yeah. And there's about 244 players in this community. Keeps on growing. Keeps on growing. It's topic time. No, I can't do that the same as Techno. But anyways, I do have a topic that I'd like to bring up. And since the New Year's recently passed, like, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, or it's like 12 days ago, I guess, technically. And we always, it's the time to make New Year's resolutions, so I thought it'd be interesting if we talked about more of our gaming resolutions for the New Year. You know, kind of goals that we have for, you know, just sort of collecting in the future in this year. So I guess for me, and I started doing it recently, and you'll notice with a lot of my newer pickups, is that, you know, I'm really, like, I'm trying to not focus about, like, you know, kind of low-budget, like, filler titles, I guess you could say, you know, buying, like, cheap games just because they're cheap. I'm really focusing hardcore on games I've always wanted to own, which actually feels really good to do that. Yeah, granted, it takes a lot more time to get games, and I get a lot less games, but when I do get a game, it's always a quality title, so, you know, you know like, picking up Solo to Robo, that's a game I always wanted. Picking up Persona 2, I always wanted that. And recently, what else I pick up? I picked up the Atelier Rorana Premium Edition, which I wanted forever. What else? Um, oh, I finally picked up 999 on the DS, which I always wanted. So just stuff like that, I guess, for me is really focusing hardcore on titles that, you know, I know I really want to play. And spending a little bit more money, yeah, but getting titles I've always wanted. And, you know, just not a bunch of random games, you know. And just kind of like I always do. I always look out for the best deals when I purchase games, so just continue what I've been doing, getting like steals for games and getting the best prices possible. And I guess adding, I, hopefully this year I eventually want to add either Sega CD or Sega Saturn to my collection. I recently bought a new system, so that narrows out those two. It's actually something different, but I would do want a Sega CD, Sega Saturn. I'm thinking probably in August or something I'll probably pick up one of those. I'm thinking Sega CD because the titles are, there's a lot of good titles on there and they're more affordable and I'm, uh, for those like systems I want complete copies, I want the original jewel cases and you know Sega Saturn gets pricey trying to get some of those and I'm an RPG fan so I want all those like working design titles and that gets really pricey really fast so yeah I guess that's it, just focusing on you know titles I want to play of titles I've always wanted to add to the collection less like just random games and you know hopefully a new system in August another new system in August I should say so what about you guys uh, well I kinda have two and the first one's kinda like yours um, I kinda wanna spend less money on video games cause um, 
like throughout the month, um, not the month, the year of 2011, I just kind of like, if I came across a game that like someone was selling or getting rid of that's like really cheap, I'd be like, I'll buy that, and mm -hmm. you know, and like I kind of want to just like buy games I know I will like enjoy and stuff, because I remember picking up uh, Rayman 2 for the Nintendo 64, and you know what, I, I bought that months ago, and I still haven't even like popped it in my 64, so I kind of want to like just not buy random games, you know, I just want to buy games that I know I would like, you know, pretty much like you, yeah. you know, so it, plus it will, it will save me money and stuff like that, so that's one thing I definitely want to do, and then my other uh, New Year's Revolution is um, in December, actually, the, the date is going to be December 17th is going to be the 25th anniversary of Mega Man. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this or if I talked about it before, but like my, one of my g gaming goals is to collect every single Mega Man game that was ever released in the United States. And uh, I'm pretty much there. I'm only down 14 games, so like I'm really close. And there, uh, there are a few rare games like Mega Man 8 for the Sega Saturn that are going to be kind of pricey, but you know, just the other games are just like they're really cheap. Like I can get Mega Man X. 4, X5 for the PC that I, you know, really cheap on eBay or something like that. So I basically want to get every single Mega Man game released in the United States before December 17th. Yeah. You know, because I think, I think that would just be cool to have every single game, you know, yeah. before the 25th anniversary. Because even though, like, Mega Man has uh, kind of been crapped on by Capcom, I'm pretty sure Capcom's going to do something special. They have to, you know, it's the 25th anniversary. Yeah. You know, so, like, you know, I, I just kind of want to be like, yeah, I got every game, because, you know, I did complete one of my goals for 2011, and that was to get every single Legend of Zelda game. So, like, that's just the next goal of mine, is just get every single Mega Man one. <laughs> so, what about you, Techno? Um, hopefully I can, uh, complete the Dreamcast collection. Um, one thing I'm really wanting is the broadband adapter and I know I'm gonna have to spend lots of money on that because it doesn't go for cheap and to build a uh, better Saturn collection and um, since I mentioned this on my Facebook I bought a Sega CDX, hmm. and cool. uh, it's coming with some games like um, Sonic CD. Ha ha ha! Hmm. Well, I'm supposed to mention Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a Spider Man game, and a few others. And I want to, because I never had a, a Sega CD. Model 1, 2, or the CDX, or any of the others whenever the Sega CD was, you know, brand new, out, you know, being sold in stores. So, that'd be pretty awesome. Never had a Saturn either. Till my friend left his at my house, I was, and never came back for it, so I was like, it's all mine. Oh my god, he's turned into Golem. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for me. I, I really just kind of picture you hovering over your Dreamcast, but it's like painted all gold and stuff. Or like he's petting it and it's like, my <laughs> yeah, I really just pictured that. <laughs> I could totally see it. Techno's golden Dreamcast. <laughs> I'm in the Dreamcast Saturn, that's so funny. Uh, and I guess, like, I'll bring this thing up. Like, I do have the the goal. Like, I never really mentioned it. Like, I mentioned it once a long time ago, I think, on a video. I don't even remember. But I do want to own every Atlas-published Nintendo DS game, which I've secretly been working on for quite a while now. And I think I have, I want to say 12, and I think with the Atlas logo on it, because there's a couple of games they like, it's really weird where they publish it, like the Naruto games, like they would, 
they made those, I think, or something. Like, they have their logo in there somewhere, but their really? logo's not on the game. Like, it's by Tomy instead, so I don't really consider those. So, only Atlas, and, you know, I have, like, 11, 12, and I think I have a couple more coming to me, like, at least one or two more, and that uh, would be, like, halfway, so. But the reason I say is because there's actually, you know, Atlas titles usually have the habit of going up in value pretty quick, and, you know, they're kind of both sides, like, they'll either go up in value really high, or actually decrease in value really low, so that's the kind of beauty of it, like, a lot of these games are, like, under 10 bucks, like, I could get these for 10 bucks, 15 bucks at most, which I've gotten a lot of them for that price, but there's about, like, five to six, which are extremely rare, one of them is My World, My Way, which is an out-of-print Nintendo DS game, they only printed, like, a couple thousand, and it's extremely hard, like, to find, because there's only, like, one, two, maybe three copies on eBay, like, most of the times, and they usually fetch, like, $50 around there, and recently, a game I'm really kind of kicking myself for never buying, and I wanted to buy it on release date, I'm really mad at myself, because, go figure, like, now it's an extremely rare game, and that's Radiant Historia, at first, like, it was pretty available most of the time, you know, like, $30, $35, and recently, I've been checking this last month, Literally, brand new copies jump all the way up to like eighty, ninety dollars for a DS game, a brand new really? DS game. Yeah, so I'm so pissed at myself for missing a chance. That's gonna be the game that's really gonna haunt me for a complete collection. But eventually, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to find a random copy someday. But that and I guess Etrian Odyssey one and two, which I have the three, which is actually pretty rare now. And I need Luminous Arc, which is a pretty expensive one. I have Luminous Arc 2. But other than that, I actually, you know, besides those few rare games, I have a majority of... I think it's actually totally doable. I have one of the rarest ones, which is the first printing of Knights of the Nightmare on the DS, which I've never seen any more copies ever pop up on eBay. If I put that up on eBay, I bet you I could get like $80, $90 for it. But, you know, it's doable. I'm over halfway there, so, you know, maybe this year. We'll see. There's some expensive games for sure. But yeah, that'd be cool though. You collect Atlas game, I'll collect Mega Man games. Yeah. <laughs> that uh that My World, My Way, that's that um uh, that girl RPG, is that right? Or? Yeah, well it's everyone assumes it's a girl RPG, but it's actually if you play it it's kind of like a hardcore RPG, so I still wanna play it. Yeah. But it is, it's, the, it's got like a girly cover, it's got pink on the cover, but whatever, it's still one. Techno's after every Sonic game. Ever made. Shit. Even the shitty ones, like, he wants them all. <laughs> no! I don't want the shitty ones. Isn't Sonic R, like, your favorite game of all time? Yes, what? it is. No, but that did does have good music. Sonic Shuffle is your favorite game? Sonic Riders for Connect. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no. god don't, even say, no. don't even say Sonic and Riders in the same sentence. I swear to god. <laughs> Horrible right. game. Horrible. I actually did like the first one though. On GameCube. What is next? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We could do news or we can make fun of Techno some more. You know, whatever. We could do sure. More. <laughs> whatever you want to do. Techno's a douche anyway. Yeah, yeah like, you're an okay. asshole, then. Listen, at least I don't, like, go after pink hedgehogs and shit like that. Oh, my God. Don't start that shit again. <laughs> come on, man. I, kn I know Amy's cute and everything, but come on. She's, like, what, eight and a hedgehog? And Seriously, man, come on. Do that news. Do the news, Techno. Do the news. It's news time. <laughs> It's news time, it's news time, go, go, tell the news. Tell the news. You need one of those, like, sound bites that's, like, like a news, like, this just in, <laughs> like, breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> go. <laughs> All right. Well, if you thought the PS4 was going to be at E3, it's not going to be. Um... Alright, so, the big honcho, Kazuro Irai, I know that's not how you say it. You butchered the hell out of it. But yeah, 
Um, he uh, nipped that rumor in the bud. Um, like, he said pretty much uh, we're wanting to keep the PS3 alive for, you know, a 10-year run. Um, but there was rumors about the Xbox as well being there, uh, but there's a lack of, you know, you know, they haven't really said anything about the Xbox. I do not think the Xbox is going to be at E3, because we haven't really heard anything. Um, well, I haven't, um, about the Xbox 720 or whatever it's going to be called, because you never know what you know, consoles are going to be called because, you know, the Wii was called the Revolution and then got called the Wii and then everyone was bitching about it because, you know, the Xbox <laughs> everyone was Dolphin. making jokes. Wasn't it going to be called, like, the Xbox U? It was going to be called, well, the, the original one was the Direct Xbox. Yeah, because it runs Direct X. Yeah, Microsoft. And then... The Dolphin. <laughs> yeah, Dolphin for a GameCube. That's badass. I want to play a Dolphin. I would play. <laughs> like, what a you system playing, man? I'm playing Dolphin. I would play a system called a Dolphin. <laughs> dolphin Online. They uh, that's the emulator. Online is called the Dolphin. For a GameCube. Um, but yeah, uh, I do believe we're going to see uh, the Wii U at E3, more of it, since they just kind of just showed off some con or the controller and not the actual hardware, or, you know, the system itself. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I agree. Like, they're... I think for both Microsoft and Sony, don't expect to see anything new from them. I mean, Sony's got the PS Vita on their hands. They're they're not going to talk a, about a new system when they're more emphasis on other system. If anything, they're just going to maybe talk some, about some new IPs for the PS Vita and whatnot, and maybe some new features for PlayStation 3 because they're always adding stuff. Same with Xbox. You know, they're probably going to push Connect more like always, and it's going to be one of those horrible Connect shows. Hopefully not. I'm getting sick and tired of connectors. Sony's going to do that with the PS Move. Yeah, probably. New Move games. <laughs> but yeah, I hope, uh, I don't know, Xbox, a new Xbox, they they really don't need one. But, like, they don't need a new Xbox or a PS3. And honestly, I don't see what they're going to improve. Like, <laughs> until, they're, until there's, like, a breakthrough with, like, HD graphics... Like, 1080p is as far as it's going quality-wise. You're not going any further than that unless you start implementing, like, new ways to play the game, which kind of Nintendo's all about, like, you know, 3D without glasses or, you know, motion controls, or introducing motion controls for the first time or a tablet controller, as weird as it sounds. Who knows? But Nintendo, yeah, they did... I think I read an article where they said they were going to talk more hardcore about the Wii U and they were going to have more, like, physical, like, hardware because they didn't really show anything, and that's because they didn't want to, like, take away from, like, the spotlight of the Wii U, and, you know, and they actually didn't have some of the stuff ready yet, so you're going to see, like, more, you know, actual hardware of the Wii U, like, how it would look and everything, so, and more gameplay, obviously, but, yeah, don't expect to see any new consoles from Sony or Microsoft. I'm still waiting for that virtual reality system. Yeah. I'm waiting for the day when you buy, like, a helmet and put it on and put cartridges in the helmet or something. That's the, R, that's the R zone, man. I want one of those. I want two. I want two of those ones with the flip downs. That way I can play the same game at once, but covers both eyes. <laughs> Which is so cool. Tiger, Tiger R zone. <laughs> oh, man. I remember that damn thing. What what was the thing that you put it on your back, or it was like a backpack, and it uh, your screen was 
Like, it was a projector? Hmm. Was that... I have no idea. Man, I remember wanting one of those so damn bad, and then later I found out it sucked ass. Because, <laughs> like, it had, you know, big games, like top-tier games like Mortal Kombat 2, and um, I heard all of it, like, ran really fucking slow. And there was, like, no sound sometimes. It, it was, uh, yeah, sucked. So, <laughs> on to the next. New <laughs> Go for it. All right, Microsoft Shell's fancy TV service for the Xbox 360. There was a lot of buzz last year that Microsoft would be in introducing a new TV subscription service for the 360, one that would bring all kinds of, of live TV shows to the platform and let them work with motion and voice control. Nothing ultim ultimately became of it because, well, nothing ultimately uh, became of it. A report on Reuters today reveals that Microsoft was at one point, one point very, very serious about the service, but backed down and shelved it when it found out how much TV networks were going to charge for the live feeds of their programming. So. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> never heard you of that. No idea? Yeah, I never heard about this either. What is it like? What's the feature like? We watch TV or something. <laughs> yeah, it. That's what it sounds like. You were going to be able to watch all. Like it would be. Um, it was like um, you'd have like specific channels, mm. and then you know they found out how much fucking cable is. And they bagged out. So. Yeah. Good thing. That's what a TV's for. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm like... Uh, you already uh, have, like, Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that, no. though. There's all your yeah, TV shows right there. And I can watch Netflix on my 3DS, so... <laughs> yep. So, on to the final... One. Wait a minute, what about Sonic? What? 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 <laughs> I didn't say nothing about Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, you just did. There well, you go. We didn't say what well, Sonic, we just said Sonic. I know, Why'd you I have to bring up the Hedgehog? I was talking about Guile Sonic Booms. You I was talking, talking about Sonic. Sonic. I was talking about Sonic the Restaurant. <laughs> yeah, me, me too, man. Jeez. That felt good, though. <laughs> Put long cheese coat in. <laughs> The other one talking about Sonic the Hedgehog and her slut Amy. Her slut? Yeah, we don't yeah. know if Sonic's a boy or a girl. Yeah, Sonic is obviously like some sort of transvestite hedgehog thing. Oh That's why he can change multiple colors based oh on his sex. Oh my god. You... God damn it. News time. Continue. News time, yeah. All right, so, um, yeah, anyone wanting Kid Icarus for the 3DS? I do. I do. Yeah, yeah, and we all thought it was going to come out very soon. Well, the reason why it hasn't came out, because it's going to be bundled with something. Oh, yeah? And no, not a awesome-looking limited edition 3DS it's bundled with a fucking stand a plastic stand for your 3DS I saw that <laughs> the fuck really do you have a Nintendo I saw the image of like what's the point of that it's like it just like the stand kind of like tilts it up a little and has it like maybe a couple inches like off the desk or whatever <laughs> like, like, what's, what's the point of that? <laughs> do you have a, like, a link? I want to see this. Yeah, I can find a link right here. 
Yeah, but it's just a stupid little, like, plastic. It looks like a little cheap plastic stand where you just throw your DS, it kind of angles it a little bit and, you know, rises it a little bit off the ground or the desk, a couple inches. Is it going to be the same, like, price and stuff I know, as I a normal game? I just want to be able to buy the game by itself. I know, I just want the game. I don't care about no stand. Yeah, that thing looks stupid. <laughs> It's just a cheap plastic hunger jump. Why would you need that? You, you don't. You, you, I don't know. You don't. That, the thing probably takes them like 50 cents to make, too. I know. <laughs> a couple of cheap plastic were good. And then they mark up by like $20 or something. It's... So, yeah. Stupid! What the fuck? Anyone who's ever wanted a stand for your 3DS, here you go. <laughs> what about your news, Clyde? All right. Uh, let's say new stories I have are EA is bringing free DLC to Mass Effect 3 and the Kingdom of Alamar Reckoning. It's been announced that uh, both games are getting DLC if you play the demo for the other game. The Reckoning is getting a demo on January 17th, where it'll come with free stuff. By playing the Reckoning demo, you'll unlock equipment for the full game of Mass Effect 3 and in reverse or vice versa for the other game. If you play the Mass Effect 3 demo, you will get... For the Kingdom of Alamar Reckoning game, you'll get the Reckoner Knight Armor, which will maximize damage done to close quarter combat, while a buffed power-up cell feed energy into weapon systems to increase uh, projectile velocity. And you'll also unlock the Chuck Ram Launcher, a weapon uses a fabricator to maneuver lightweight explosive ammunition discs. This weapon is earned by completing the Reckoning demo and watching the trailer at the end. To unlock the stuff for King of Alamar the Reckoning by playing the Mass Effect 3 demo, you'll unlock the N7 armor, which players can unlock a special armor inspired by Commander Shepard, and this will include a helm, gauntlet, and test plate. And you'll also unlock uh, the Omni Blade Daggers, a holographic blade streaming from Commander Shepard's Omni Tool. The Omni Blade allows players to stab enemies at close combat. Once a player installs and plays the Mass Effect 3 demo, they will unlock the daggers. Now you'll also unlock the Twist of Fate card. This card boosts the player's ice resistance and is immediately unlocked when he or she activates the Reckoning demo using his or hers origin account. And you also unlock the Twin Souls Chuck Ram, a new unique weapon that damages enemies while boosting players' health and mana. And uh, that's about it. So you actually unlock quite a bit more stuff for the King of Almar Reckoning by playing the Mass Effect 3 demo than the other way around. But, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Yeah, free DLC is always good, because uh, there's no way in hell I'd buy DLC. <laughs> well, I'll definitely play the uh, the Kingdom of uh, Alamar Reckoning demo just to get the Mass Effect 3 shit. I'll yeah. definitely do that. Yeah. So, you guys play Mass Effect 3 or the other one a lot? Yeah, it'd be Mass Effect 1 and 2. I'd love them. Yeah. I couldn't get into one. Yeah, one's kind of odd. I mean, I still think it was really good though. But Mass Effect Two was incredible. Totally agree. Yeah, you know, I was really picky too towards the end. Like, I got the achievement for you know, No Man Left Behind, and I beat the game without anyone dying. Oh, I got that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I loved it. It was a great game. Okay, and the, uh, the next news story I got is AT&T officially outlines the Vita service plans. Okay, it was announced that the official data provider for the new PSP handheld was provided uh, uses two ways to get their Vita on the 3G network. You could either pay $14.99 a month, 
which features a 250 250 megabyte cap or you could pay $25 a month to get uh, up to 2 gigs. Again, this is a month to month plan with uh, no contract whatsoever, but as a bonus, anyone who activates the 3G Wi-Fi unit with one of the TNT data plans, he or she will be eligible to choose one free download from the list of selected available games. What do you guys think about that? Mm. And I, I don't like that. Like, it's like a cell phone or something, basically. Like, I don't feel like having fees attached to my gaming console, you know? <laughs> like, I just feel like it should be in there, basically. And it's so weird. Like, what if you don't use it a month? Like, you know, you play it a little bit and you still have to pay, like, that 30 or 40 just like a regular cell phone. Like, if you don't use your cell phone that much, you're still paying your bill if you want your cell phone in. It's just weird having fees and all that contracts attached to a gaming system. I can never That's, do that. There is no contracts. Well, then it's still, you're paying fees, so you got to pay them. A.K.A., you're still getting fucked in the ass. Yeah, and that cap, like, what's it, like, 250 like, whatever? Yeah, it's 250 megabytes for $14 a month, which is pure bullshit, because I can go to, like, Target and yeah. get a 4 gig, uh, USB card for like ten bucks or something. Yeah, because I don't get to, like if if you download a lot of games, you're gonna eat through that a lot. Like two hundred fifty megabytes will go pretty fast if you love downloading like games off PSN and stuff like that. You'll use up that quite fast. So. I don't know. I, I would if I bought one, I'd just go with the Wi-Fi because I have Wi-Fi and also I have an Android phone which allows me to use it as a Wi-Fi access. So. It'd be like 3G anyways, like I could have inner access with me anywhere. So if I yeah. bought a PS Vita, it'd be Wi-Fi version. I think we already talked about this, like, didn't all three of us prefer the Wi-Fi over the 3G anyway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's all the news that I have. Yay. So, Techno, you and Amy, huh? What the hell's, what's up with that shit? Are you cheating oh on Sonic? God. I'm done talking about this shit. No, oh, I'm not. Neither am I. I know. I know. <laughs> so, can't wait to pawn some noobs on Mario Kart. <laughs> Dude, me, me neither, man. <laughs> have you, have you been playing a lot? No, uh, like I said, like, uh, all the times I've like played with you guys, that's actually what I played. Like, I never really played outside of that. Oh. But I definitely want to play some more this weekend. Uh, okay. Technically, have you played on the, the YouTube community at all? I don't see you. Yes. Really? But not much, because most of the time when I get on, no one's on there. Well, you should let us know. We'll be on. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. I'll always jump on. Well, see, here's the thing. Um, I still don't have internet at my grandma's yet, because that's like... In a couple of weeks, I'll get that, and then I'll, you know, call you guys up or whatever on Skype. Just, just go to Starbucks, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I don't have the Starbucks. McDonald's. Go to McDonald's. Go to McDonald's. Grimace, you're Grimace. I'm I know. Go, go to McDonald's. I should get fucking free hamburgers. Yeah, I was about to say you should just walk up in there like I'm royalty. I'm Grimace. <laughs> I'm Grimace. <laughs> Give me a Big Mac. <laughs> I don't like Big Macs. Well, oh, I don't care. Are you serious, man? I like Little Macs. Little Macs. I like Little Macs. I, like Little Mac. <laughs> I love dude, Big Macs, I hate dude. McDonald's, man. Dude, you know what? I actually prefer Burger King way better. Yeah, me too. This is a good I question. What's everyone's favorite like burger joint? I guess Burger King, dude. No, yeah, hey. fucking Burger King, bye <laughs> bye, or White Shut Castle, <laughs> or fucking. Oh, man, I don't know. Shout out to all the West Coast people out there. in and out Burger. Hands down, that's easy. in and out God. It's the most amazing burgers ever. You get the double-double or single and you can get it, like, monster style. And The fries are amazing. in and out's amazing. But it's wow. only California and Arizona now. Well, until I try that, man, it's Burger King all the way for me, man. Yeah, and if I had to pick, like, a standard one between, like, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, Burger King. You know, I haven't actually eaten Burger King in a long time, but I do like Burger King and Jack. I actually don't eat at McDonald's a whole lot, but I don't hey. mind Big Macs. I do like Big Macs eventually. 
<laughs> Can I tell a story? Yeah. Get a load of this! Okay, so, uh, I'm like, ninth grade uh, band uh, trip. Okay, we're going to St. Louis to, or maybe Texas, I don't know. Uh, Six Flags, I think. So, I don't know. Does St. Louis have Six Flags? I don't know. You're talking. You're talking about a state like uh, I don't know. Thirteen, 13 states away from me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, um, yeah, um, we stopped by. We weren't there yet. Uh, we stopped by um, a place where it was Subway. We could choose either Subway or uh, Jack in the Box. And my friend picks Jack in the Box, and I pick Subway. And uh, he comes back, and we're on the road. He fucking shits himself. Oh, and shit. I'm like, he's like, oh my god, that burger sucked ass, and I can, I now know why. Cause I shit myself, and yeah, it it was. I was like, oh god, that fucking sucks, man. And we didn't get, uh, get to go back to the hotel that we were staying in till later. The burgers went right through them. <laughs> I went right through them. <laughs> Shout out to all the listeners who are eating during this time. <laughs> well, yeah, why the hell did you just tell that story? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's eating, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, all right. Quality <laughs> stuff. If you want to take that out, sure, whatever. No, I'll leave it in. <laughs> all right, Techno, so what exactly are you pissed about this week? Well, yesterday, playing my Dreamcast, playing some Grandia 2. Now, I'm not that far into it, but I was, I'm at some uh, bar in thing and um, talking to this dude, whatever, and I uh, get out or whatever. The story keeps going. And, like, the chick that you have with you that you have to go to somewhere, I forget, and she goes to sleep because she's, like, drunk off these, like, apple things or something. It's weird. She's drunk off apples? Dude, there's, like, these uh, things that she eats. And then you can see, like, you know in anime where they're, like, drunk? And they have like the red little, uh, little like uh, color across their nose. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she's like that. So I've always thought that meant she was drunk, because you know they act all you know drunk like, and uh, they put her to sleep, and then like this. This evil bitch comes in and is like, uh, talks to the dude, whatever that you are. And then <coughs> we go to back downstairs and then, like, this guy, these groups of people like, talking to you or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it reset itself. And I was like, what the fuck? And I tried it again, restarted it, it did did it again. I was like, oh my god, don't tell me my Dreamcast is broken, because I'm going to cry. And then, you know, I brought it back, or I brought it, my Dreamcast, to uh, work with me. And looked up on YouTube for, like, resetting problem fixes or whatever, and I actually found uh, 
a video about it on uh, from A. Murphy, um, a guy I watch on YouTube, and uh, it's very simple fix. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, do a video about it. So, yeah, that pissed me off. But good thing I wasn't too far from the save area. All right, Dan, what exactly is pissing you off this week? Hmm, I don't know. Got a lot of work to do. College, <laughs> you know, my college schedule is crazy as all hell. <laughs> is this the segment you're doing, what's pissing you off? <laughs> what's pissing me off about college? <laughs> no, I'm a happy person. Can't wait to play some video games this weekend. You are a happy person. What's pissing me off? I ran out of Coca-Cola, so I'm really sad. <laughs> it's empty. It's an empty can. I'm thirsty, too, so... <laughs> I'm going to do my segment, if you guys don't mind. Go for it. don't shut up. Oh! <laughs> hey! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, it's actually been quite a while since we've done segments, but... Yeah, I like to recommend obscure kind of niche games, overlooked games that, you know, games that are kind of forgotten about or swept under a rug, overlooked, whatnot. And recently, I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, me playing this game. Highly recommended Nintendo DS game, and that's Solo to Robo Red to Hunter. This is a game published by Exceed, made by Bandai Namco. Hey, Tales of Vesperia, yay. But yeah, <laughs> quality-wise, you know, expect Bandai Namco quality, but... It's a kind of light action RPG. Like, there's no true, like, overly complex RPG elements, and it's really, and probably the biggest downfall of the game, extremely, extremely simple game, but don't get it wrong, it is actually an incredible experience, a very fun game. You play as this character named Red, who's a hunter, and it's set in this universe where all these characters are, like, furries, so they're all, like, dogs and cats, and really interesting concept. But later on in the story, they... You know, like, it wouldn't make sense, you know, like, you can't really uh, put yourself in the character's shoes because it's like a dog and a cat, but later on in the story, you do a good job kind of making you care for these characters and sympathizing with them, almost like on a human level. But it's an action RPG where, you know, you play as Red, who controls a mech suit, and you go around to, like, different cities and pick up quests, you know, standard RPG stuff. Pick up quests from the quest broker, you're going to have to do quests in order to progress the story, and... The battle system revolves around this mechanic where you go into dungeons, and dungeons are pretty extremely simple throughout the whole game. They're not too complex, so you don't have to worry about getting lost or a dungeon being, like, so complicated. They're usually really straightforward, which is nice. But the battle system revolves around picking up enemies, so you pick them up by mashing on the A button, and you'll pick them up, and you could throw them and do, like, combos, so, like, you could grab them in the air and keep throwing them. And later on in the game, as you progress, like, past the 10-hour mark, they'll add some additions to the battle system, which kind of gives some nice variety to the battle system and kind of make it a little more complex where you can do more moves. But, yeah, you basically go to cities, and the presentation of the video of the game, uh, the presentation of the cities is absolutely incredible. It's the most beautiful DS game you will ever see, honestly. And this is a swan song for the Nintendo DS. This is a... Uh, I guess, last great Nintendo DS game. They use this kind of like, it's almost like a five-layer technique of layering, as we call it, where it's got a foreground, a mid-foreground, a middle ground, a mid-background, and a background. So if you can understand how complex that gets, that means they put layers upon layers upon layers to give the city, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but it gives it so much more depth than, that, than it actually looks like it has. You can see, like, little birds flying off in the distance or the ocean waves or whatever. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So you progress through the city, and there's different missions that you come across. Like, there'll be some flying segments where you fly around because the suit can fly, and that works pretty well. There's, like, a little Mario Kart-ish kind of game with, you know, racing, a flying racing game. And it's a really good story, so... And the 10-hour mark, you know, the first 10 hours is kind of slow, but once you get past the 10 hours, you really start picking up, and you really start getting to the climax of the game, and you'll be hooked if past the 10-hour mark. It gets really good. Highly recommended Nintendo DS game. I mean, not much more to say about it. If you like RPG games, you should definitely check it out. If you like, you know, action RPG games, definitely check it out. Or if you're a fan of adventure games in general, it's just a 
you know, really grand, epic adventure with lots of stuff to do. It, it introduces so many little, like, niche kind of things in it, like, little components of all kinds of games. Like, there's shooting components, there's, you know, like, other components, there's, like, music components, you can collect music notes, you can collect photo photographs to build, like, photo pieces and look at them later on in the library. It's really extensive, like, it'll probably take you to beat the whole game, depending how much you want to clear and all that, probably you know, kind of beelining it, maybe 20 hours and wanting a 100% it, anywhere from like 25 to 30 hours, but really great game. If you have a DS, definitely, definitely do yourself a favor and check out Solo to Robo. Highly recommended. But what about you, Clive? What retro goodness would you like to recommend? Well, uh, this game I'd like to uh, talk about is a game that used to be on the Sega Genesis, and I used to play this a lot with my brothers, and that is General Chaos. You guys ever play this game? No. Oh, this game is great. It's a strategy game uh, that was released in 1994, and it was developed by Game Refuge Incorporated, and it was published by Electronic Arts. And uh, the game is like a quick, dirty battle game where it has like a long campaign, which is kind of like broke up, broken up in a series of battles where... It's basically like a war between two different generals, General Chaos and General Havoc. And the objective of the game is to capture the enemy's capital city. And each player has to pick one of four teams which contain like five different uh, characters with different classes. And the different classes are like you get to be, one of the guys could be like a gunner, which is like a well-round a uh, unit that has all these different firearms. You got a launcher, which is not really like a sniper, but he's more like a kind of like a bazooka type of character, and he's kind of cool because sometimes you can pull off like instant deaths if it actually hits your target correctly. And then there's a character uh, character called the Chucker, which is basically just a guy that throws grenades. He he doesn't throw them very far, but uh, he can hit like multiple units with them. And then there's another guy called the Blaster, who's just like the Chucker, but instead of throwing grenades, he throws dynamite. The only thing with him, he's like, he's really, really slow, but he does the most damage out of all five characters. And then when the last guy, who's probably like the best guy in the entire game, is the Scorcher. And he's just like this little guy that uh, runs around with a blowtorch, and once you... Uh, not a blowtorch, like a flamethrower. And once you get, like, trapped in this flamethrower, it's pretty much a good, like, 100% you're going to die. Like, it's almost like an instant death. He's, like, the most powerful in the game if you get caught in the fire. Now, these soldiers, no, like, besides, like, all their weapons and stuff, they also have, like, if they get in close combat, they actually can do, like, punches and kicks, and they can block different attacks. And if one player loses, um like, one of the men's life, it goes, he falls down to the ground, and to help that fallen soldier, a player must, uh, like, either go to that fallen soldier and call, like, a medic to, like, revive him. And, you know, if obviously, if you fail to get the medic over to that guy, he'll eventually, like, die. Now, and the... The, the, the player's view of the entire game is set in, like, this isometric perspective, which is kind of cool and you can see like the entire play field which is really great it's very hectic very chaotic and it's very cartoony it's like you could just see the the uh, the artwork that was really put into this game and it's like one of the greatest games i played for the the sega genesis it's really fun just uh, especially with two players you, you i recommend playing with two players because you play by yourself it's kind of boring now, uh, the director, have you guys ever heard the show uh, Hogan's Heroes? Yes. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys know that the, the director of the Hogan Heroes TV, uh, TV series filed a uh, lawsuit against, uh, against this game in 1994 based on the quotations in the game. Um, Colonel Clink's favorite... Uh, infam Colonel Clink's famous line from Hogan's Heroes is Hogan, and when a soldier is flame-broiled on the battlefield within the game, he actually screams out Hogan. So that's why um, there was that lawsuit against this game, but the uh, the suit flopped a few months after 
the games released and um, EA was quickly uh, quickly able to recover from it. So um, that's the game that uh, really great game that I used to play as a kid. I highly recommend you guys pick up uh, General Chaos if you guys get a chance. This is for what system? I don't think you mentioned it. Sega Genesis. Oh, cool. Sounds interesting. I might check that out. Yeah, I, like I said, if you're going to play it, um, play it with like a friend, because it's really good. Just uh, screwing the other person over. <laughs> and make sure you get the flamethrower guy. <laughs> flamethrower. Best character in that game. Every game needs a flamethrower. Every game should have a flame. Like Sonic should have a flamethrower. Should be mandatory. Like Mega Man has a flamethrower, so why not Sonic? Well, there's flamethrowers trying to kill Sonic. Mario That's not the same fireballs. thing, though. <laughs> I know. See, Mario, Mega Man both have flamethrowers, and Sonic does not. What? What's up with that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> next. Ah, uh, let's see. Next is our YouTube shout out. Yay! Hey, go for it. Yay! All right. Uh, I like to shout out this guy, and uh, this guy is named uh, Mika161. And um, this guy, if you guys go to his channel, check him out. He's uh, he's a really cool guy. He does a lot of. Um, PlayStation 3 uh, stuff, talks about Skyrim quite a bit, uh, Borderlands, and he does this series called Gamers Talk. He has about three or four episodes um, of that show, so uh, I recommend you guys check him out. He does a lot of PS3 stuff, so if you're into the PS3, um, check this guy out. He has a lot of he has a lot of things to say about the system. So guys, check out Mika161, um, really cool guy. Nice. Techno, no. say, say your line. Nice. <laughs> say your no. line, Techno. Sweet. Hey, guys, guys. Does does my uh does my uh clock deceive me? Because it says it's question time. No, you didn't say it. God. You didn't say your line, Techno. You gotta break what? some oh, kneecaps, man. You gotta break some oh, kneecaps, man. Shit. Come on. Aww. Listeners love that. Totally fucked that up. Oh, well, hurry quickly. Come on, break someone's legs. Let's Redeem go. Yourself. Come on, come on. Come on, I'm redeem break it. Break goddamn legs with my fucking external hard drive if you don't check this guy out. Awesome. Oh, my. I feel so much better now that you threatened our listeners. Thank you. <laughs> I was scared <laughs> that you were going to threaten anyone. I know. Jeez. It's not the Press Start Podcast unless uh, there's bodily harm. Exactly. <laughs> now you can go talk. Now you can do the question thing. Oh, my God. I already did it. I can't do that again. No, you have to do You're ruining the show. Come on. <laughs> okay, I got to think of something else. Something funny. What do you mean, think of something else? You just say, it's question time. It that's boring though. You gotta have something. <laughs> Dude, you, you know, just said it like it. two minutes ago. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I gotta have something relating to time. Okay, techno. What time is it? What time it is? It is. God damn. Ugh. I'm leaving all this in. I hope you know that. No, Look you're not. Pants. Look at that, my watch is broken. I can't tell the time. Maybe Techno Dude, knows. You know what time it is? It is that question time! Yeah. Yeah! Woo! We need like a audience clap thing yeah. there. One of those sitcom claps. <laughs> yeah. They just clap randomly. I am laughing so freaking hard right now. <laughs> that was perfect, you love it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, All right. we have actually quite a bit of, uh, a lot of questions. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we thank you. For yeah, we thank, thank you. I think this is, the, 
I think this is the most questions we got uh, ever. So, all right, uh, let's go to the first question, and this is from Sinister Moon, and he asks, "What is your favorite in television game?" And you can't say Sonic Techno. <laughs> I know because I've never played it in television. So Burger I don't have time. A Burger time and Tron Deadly Disc. Wait, wait, was it, wasn't, a uh, what's Berserk on there, or, um, Robotron? Um, I think Robotron was. Yeah, I think Berserk was only on the Vectrex. I don't know. Yeah, I, but I know it's on the Vectrex. Robotron 2084 is amazing. Yes, it is. Um, let's see, for me... I know it's kind of generic if I say Pac-Man, so I'm going to say Pitfall. Pitfall is my favorite. Nice. Okay, and our next question is from, uh, speaking of dolphins earlier, we have Meeting Flippa. And he asks, what is the nastiest thing you would do to get your hands on the one game you have always wanted but cannot find or get? Like, how far would you go to get a game in the best way that you possibly could? That's his question. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about nastiest thing would do, but if I want a game, I would just buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have the money. I, mean, buy I it. have money. Yeah, I think I would just kind of go on eBay and just buy it. The nastiest thing I would do? I would outbid someone on eBay. Ooh. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd be one of those snipe. <laughs> I would eBay snipe sniping. somebody. Sniping. Yeah, I always do that too. Like the last. That's pretty last nasty too. That's a nasty tactic if you think about it. Yeah, last thirty seconds, I always do that. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's twenty seconds left. Input bid. And then once you win, you pay for it like two minutes later. So like, yeah. like it's confirmed. But that's my thing, is just, I guess, just buy it. Yeah. Snipe it. Snipe if you want to prefer. I would outbid people. What would, about you, Techno? I would slap Techno. <laughs> oh, I'd slap your ass. No, no. I'd slap your oh. three ass. <laughs> no. Techno's getting naughty. <laughs> I, I totally, I, I knew what I was was saying right after I said ass, like, I was like, oh my god, did I just fucking say that? <laughs> you would lick some ass, though. No, oh, god. Not. Techno, you sick freak. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Techno, what's your answer? I would snipe. Snipe, okay. <laughs> you, you wouldn't touch someone's ass, is that? Okay. I would if it was a girl. If it was Amy. Uh, yeah, Amy. Oh, God damn. <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Next question is from Tim Jumbo Junkie, and this is a question only for Techno. Uh, he says, uh, he says, Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, which one would you marry, fuck, or kill? Okay, well... It, it was Wendy's, Burger King, and what? McDonald's. 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 I fucking kill McDonald's. I fucking hate McDonald's. I would um, marry Burger King and fuck Wendy because, yeah, whatever. So, so you, would, you, would, you would have you sex with the 12 year old mascot? She's older now. Yeah, but the picture is still the same. Who gives a flying fuck? <laughs> it's a fucking restaurant. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. Okay, the next question next question is from Ben, and he pretty much asked the same question. He asks, uh, Samus Aaron, Jill Valentine, Laura Croft, which one would you sleep with, marry, or kill? And this is for all of us. Okay. Damn. That's a hard fucking choice, because I love me some Jill Valentine and some Samus. 
And Lara Croft. <laughs> God damn. That's hard. I can't uh, answer that. Well, you're going to have to. But uh, I think for me, I would have to... I think Jill Valentine would be the only type out of the three that would settle down and get married. So I would marry Jill Valentine. Uh, Lara Croft, it kind of depends. If it's the old Lara Croft from PlayStation 1, I would kill her. But <laughs> if it's the new Lara Croft for, oh, yeah. the, for the newest game, uh, I would have sex with her. So that would... It would basically, Lara Croft and Samus would have to depend on which Lara Croft you're talking about. I would totally do the Samus from the NES. <laughs> the 8-bit blocking one, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I guess if I married one, it'd probably be Jill Valentine. And, you know, because Samus and Lara are always on the go, you know, they never want to settle down. They're always, Lara's out in the jungle and stuff, doing random stuff. Samus is on random planets and all this. So they would never settle down, but I'd probably sleep with, huh, it's hard. But probably, yeah, like the new Lara Croft. Yeah. Nah. Probably kill Samus, uh, but I love Zero Suit oh, Samus. Fuck no. Hell no. Fuck. Wait a minute, why are you saying fuck no? You didn't even an You can't even answer this question. You already okay. said that. My answer, kill the fuck out of Lara Croft. Have wow. Have sex with Samus. And marry Jill Valentine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I love the new Lara Croft. Uh, yeah, I actually can't. I want to play that game, the new one. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's see. We got three more questions from Ben. So his next question is, you are allowed to be transported and exist inside any reality of one game's universe as yourself. What would it be? Hmm. So basically, you can be in a game, but only as yourself. What's a cool place to be in? I think we had this question. I think we already had this question before. Yeah. Yeah. And um, oh. I, don't know. I would just have to say Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Hell yeah! I can't think of one for me. You know, you could be in, like, you know, Sonic's 2006 and be Sonic's love interest. Oh, my God, no! No! We, Why not, dude? You promised me you'd never talk about that game again. I didn't promise anything like that. <laughs> I promised not to say Amy again. You did! Oh, I, I, know. I know. I'd love to live in, like, any of the cities from Solo to Rebel. Just beautiful cities. Anyone, I wouldn't really care. You would be the only human. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. What about you, Techno? I can't play. How about Shaq Fu? <laughs> God, <Pong>. no! <laughs> I like to live in the world of Pong. <laughs> <laughs> the world of Pong. <laughs> It's an infinite black void with just these two white lines going up and down. And I'm just sitting there watching it all day long. Amazing. Um, um, hmm. Dude, Skies of Arcadia. Bro, Sky yes. Pirates. Yeah? Yeah, but you would be yourself. You wouldn't be a pirate. I don't give a flying fuck. Just right. Oh, I know. One of those flying boats. I know. That's amazing. I know another one for me, I guess. Any of the cities from Star Ocean, which are these amazing, like, detailed sci-fi cities, which are really cool. They're, like, so futuristic and everything. They're awesome. Any of those cities, those are pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Next. Alright, uh, Ben's next question is, the world will come to an end. You have the ability to send one game with the console and any accessories needed in a time capsule to be saved for the future race to find and marvel at. What will it be? Oof, that's a good question. Uh, 
question. So what? So what game with the system? This is a pretty big choice. I mean, you're talking about one game and system that would exemplify like a whole entire generation of gaming that's lost. I got one. This better be good and no Sonic. Yeah, no Sonic Shuffle. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to be the troll and put in Xbox 360 Sonic 2006. <laughs> Super Nintendo with Shaq Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic 2006 and Shaq Fu. <laughs> what the hell? An Atari 2600 with Pong. <laughs> oh, this is a hard question. <sighs> mm. It's got to be a masterpiece. It's got to be something absolutely amazing that could show off like this is what we used to play back in the day. Lost Odyssey. Yeah, it's a good one. Still need to play that. With Tales of Vesperia. Tells of Vesperia in a 360. There you go. Are, are you seriously sticking with your Sonic 2006? <laughs> no. I'm oh, going oh. to go with... Shinmu. That's an interesting question. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, next question, and the last question from Ben, and he asked, you are... I say, you own... Rights or majority stock of any game company, what would it be? Nintendo. Yeah, I wouldn't want the burden of being in charge of Nintendo. It's a big corporation, all eyes on me. <laughs> so for me, I don't think, I don't I think buy you'll it. be in charge though. I think you just have stocks. Well, you own the rights to them now though, so you would buy like 51% of stock shared to own them. You um, own the rights, so you would own Nintendo. All eyes on no, you, Clive. What are you going to put out? What are you going to publish? You better publish Mario 4 or something. You, come on. That's a lot of burden. I, I would, yeah. I would have to go with Nintendo, and I would make the coolest uh, Amy Hedgehog game. <laughs> the coolest Sonic game published by Nintendo. <laughs> Featuring Amy the Hedgehog. And then you'd just get dress sued. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. They don't have the rights anymore. What you think of Sonic games on Microsoft <laughs> and Nintendo? There's Sonic games on Nintendo. There's Sonic who, everywhere. Who would ever thought we'd see the day with Sonic on Nintendo? I know. But anyways, for me, I buy 51% of either Atlas or Bandai Namco. I can't decide between them. I want Bandai Namco. That way, I could be in charge of the Tales of series and make for damn sure that every Tales of game comes out in America and doesn't stay in Japan where they're obsessed with keeping them in Japan and not bringing them out to America. So we would have had Tales of Ilya by now, we would have had all the DS ones. And plus make sure more games like Solo to Robo, you know, that you don't hand off a game like Solo to Robo, which is made by you, a fantastic game, but you have to rely on another publisher because you weren't willing to take a chance on it. Okay, it's an amazing game and you give it to Axie to publish because you were too afraid to take a chance. You need to give them some balls. That's what they need. More localization. <laughs> <laughs> and more Atlas, because just to continue, make sure Atlas the, the, keeps up on the right track. They they put, they put publish some questionable games, which they don't really need to do. Like, the uh, best example, maybe, uh, for a new one is Mahjong Cubed on the 3DS, which is just a Mahjong game, which makes no sense. Like, why did you need to bring that out? <laughs> but, yeah, just keep Atlas on the right track. Yeah, either one of those two companies. What about you, Techno, buying Sega? <laughs> um, well, first off, is it like balls, balls, or the balls, the drink? It's the balls, the toys, mad balls. <laughs> <laughs> because I wasted money on, or I ordered. Two twenty-four packs of balls. <laughs> you and never have enough balls, okay? That's a great investment. <laughs> I love that energy drink. It's my favorite. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would buy. I would get Sega and make them make a sequel to Skies of Arcadia. God damn! I've been tired of waiting. And Shimu Three. Damn. 
I'm surprised you didn't buy Capcom, Clive. You know, slap them around a little and get that company back to normal. I'll buy that, too, because I'm going to make so much money on Skies of Arcadia 2 and Shenmue 3 and they all buy this Capcom. other shit I'm going to make them do. And then I'll be like, hey, Capcom, listen up. Stop sticking your heads up your asses and eating your shit. Make some more Mega Man games that don't suck, please. And, you know. <laughs> and don't charge extra ten bucks because yeah, your game has more memory. <laughs> five dollars for another color on a Street Fighter character. <laughs> no, I was actually I was actually thinking about uh, saying Capcom, but then... Uh, like, the, my two favorite uh, gaming companies are just Nintendo and Capcom, but Nintendo is always... I've always liked Nintendo better than Capcom. That's why I went in Nintendo instead. So. Guess so. Hey. Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Damn it. And Capcom to make more beat-em-ups. Because they were one of the kings at beat-em-ups. I love their beat em ups. I mean, the Punisher, that was amazing. Yeah, it was. So, I am done. <laughs> Alright, our next question is from Tempest Uchiha, and he asks In your opinion, what is the coolest limited edition console or handheld you've ever owned or really want to own? Mm. Uh, I don't own any of limited edition console, but Me neither. I, I would love to own the Nino Kuni Gold PS3. That's an amazing looking system. I want that so bad. Hello Kitty Dreamcast. The Seaman <laughs> Dreamcast. Seaman Dreamcast. Sea Dreamcast. The clear one. All of them. Oh my god, you guys are hilarious. Um, I'm not Seaman. Oh god! Oh god! I not have enough seaman. Uh, for me, I I think we said this was it last episode, last two episodes. I used to own the uh, the golden Nintendo 64. They used to come with Ocarina of Time, and I would really like to get that back. Nice. Yeah, that was last episode. Yeah, I would. I used to have that, and I would really like to get that back. But our next question is from Chad Smith, and he asks, What is your number one game you are looking forward to in the year 2012? Nino Kuni. Easy. Uh, mine's Final Fantasy XIII, too. <sighs> mm. Either Bioshock Infinite or Jack and Daxter Trilogy HD Collection. Okay, the next one's from Mikey's Monarch, and he asks, If you could have any video game character to be your bodyguard, who would it be and why? Techno, we all know that yours would be Chung Li. Ha ha ha. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, I was going to say Mike Hagger. Mike Hagger? Why? Dude, look at him. He's fucking buff and a mayor. Dude, Zangief can kick his ass. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I care, man. All right, you know what? I'm going to pick Zangief because he can kick Mike Hager's ass. Whatever. <laughs> Actually, I would pick Cammy. <laughs> mm, Why? Of me some Cammy. I don't, I actually, I don't even think I have to ask why. I know. Yeah, I know. You don't. <laughs> uh, mine would have to be Mega Man, because mm. he has all the different weapons. Mine's would be Kirby, because <laughs> he could just suck <laughs> up enemies and take on their abilities. I will, I will want him to suck up you and gain the gain your hat. <laughs> it's a Kirby with a beanie. 
Oh, that's actually a good choice. I like that one. All right. Uh, let's see. Our next one is from Neo Jake nine 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 gamer, and he writes quite a long one. He asks or says, since Nintendo is really, really weird with all their decisions, like the pricing issues with the 3DS and the talk about adding a second analog stick, and also no one being sure about what the hell is going on with the Wii U, does it seem to you like Nintendo might be taking the Sega route? How would you feel about Nintendo going software only? That's it, Mario and Zelda on the PS3 or the 360. Hey, hold on. Let me let me get in here first. Don't you ever, ever talk about Sega like that. <laughs> it's the truth. I'll come it, and it, it, I will bust the it's kneecaps a, open with the printer. It, it's the truth, man. Basic, face it, man. Sega sucks. No, it's... <laughs> no. <laughs> Just face it. There used to be a company who made systems. Now they're a developer and publisher. Uh, I'm, I'm just teasing you, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, for me, Sega... I'm not Sega. Wow. Uh, Nintendo going software only, I think it would never happen. Yeah. I think Nintendo is one of the greatest video game companies out there. They'll never go software only. I don't think they'll ever go the Sega route. I do think Nintendo makes better handhelds than they do consoles. So maybe if they did go a certain route, maybe they would do handheld onlys. But I, you know, I see that very unlikely. No, if anyone's gonna, you know, give out, it's gonna be Sony or Microsoft before Nintendo, because you gotta think about it. Nintendo's the godfather of all this. You know, if Nintendo did even start, like, with the NES, there would be no Sega to compete with them. All these companies wanted to compete with the biggest company. You know, you want to compete with the top dog. And that's always been Nintendo, just like everyone else is still competing. Will you ever see, like, Mario on a PlayStation 3? No, it's just never going to happen. Yeah, they'll never see it. Yeah. They have way too much stock control. They have way too much investment in them. They're a company that just keeps... You know, every year they just keep soaring in stocks and soaring in production and soaring in, you know, sales. They're amazing. Like, they, even when they do flop, like, they always know how to come back and bounce back like any good company should. Like, you know, 3DS, they flopped, and now it's, hot, like, selling, like, hot in Japan. Like, they can't get enough 3DSs in Japan. So they always know how to recover. They always know how to, like, remedy mistakes and all that, so... You know, it's a company that's going to be around for quite some time. As long as video games exist, Nintendo will exist. It's that simple. Yeah, like, I could, I could never picture Mario being on 360 or a PS3, but I can kind of see Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter being on the, on the Nintendo console. Yeah. Just, like, put it that way. Techno, your thoughts? Um, well, about the Wii U, we pretty much have it figured out. We're going to see more of it at E3, like we said earlier. I'm and curious. What? I'm curious. Yeah. And, um, like you guys said, there's no way in hell Nintendo's going to go down under. Um, they have way too much money. And, you know, stocks. I mean, more people know, uh, Mario than people know Mickey Mouse. It's damn truth. I saw something on TV about it, and more people... No, Mario, the Mickey Mouse. I think I think they're part of like the top five. Aren't they like the top three most recognized franchises? Mario, Mickey Mouse, and like Coca Cola. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So Nintendo will live on forever. All right. Our last question is from. 
Point Blank Games, and he asks, if you guys had the opportunity to design your own collector's edition for an upcoming game you're excited for, what would the game, what would the game be, and what would be included in it? Well, uh, I don't know. This game is not coming out. It has. I'm just totally making this game up. But I've already mentioned uh, the 25th anniversary of Mega Man is going to be on December 17th. So I kind of, if Capcom decides to put out a Mega Man game of some sort, I would want a Mega Man game, and the collector's edition would be a soundtrack to that game, a resin statue like we got, or what Europe got for the Sonic Generations. So, um, what else would I like in it? Probably just the soundtrack, statue... For that, for that Mega Man game, if Capcom ever makes it, and I could think of some for like other games that want the upcoming. Like I've always wanted, like it already passed, but they had the Tales of 15th anniversary, and they didn't really do anything too special for that. They just kind of lowered the prices of some games. But I really wish they made like, because I think Vesperia marked the 15th anniversary. 15th year anniversary for Tales of Franchise, and I just really wish they would do, like, some chronological history art book with, like, all the art of every single Tales of game, and then a huge, like, maybe four or five CD compilation soundtrack with, like, you know, some great songs from, like, all the Tales of games, and maybe, I don't know, I just want a statue of Yuri Lowell, but for an upcoming game, hmm. That's the thing. I can't. All the upcoming games, I can't think of anything I would want to include. Yeah, like even like I want Nino Cooney, but I guess if I would chose that, I would hope they just kind of did like a simple one where I get like a nice little art book and soundtrack CD. That's usually what I like the most too, is when they just give me an art book and soundtrack CD. I'm usually yeah, that's, happy about that. I have to agree because well, that's what uh, Final Fantasy Thirteen Two is coming out with, and that's why I want to get that collector's edition. Yeah. So, that's the main thing, though, is, just, is soundtracks and art books. That's the huge thing that I would definitely want in collector's edition. But for upcoming game, I have no idea. Me neither. Um, like, I know Mass Effect 3 is coming out, but I don't need a soundtrack for that game. <laughs> well, you know what would be really cool, like, now that I think about it, a Bioshock Infinite Limited Edition with a really cool statue of, like, the giant and that one girl. Like, just a scene of, like, the giant hand and, like, the girl's touching his hand or something. Like, a cool oh, yeah. statue like that would be awesome. Because you, you know what I'm cool talking one. about, like, that giant Goliath guy from Infinite and the girl. Yeah. So, yeah. like, that would be pretty cool with, like, an art book and then, like, a soundtrack CD. It would be pretty sweet. He's a fighting robot! Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I can't think of any... We did an episode about this, too, and I can't think of any games that are coming out. Um, oh! I got one. The Amazing Spider-Man movie is coming out in the year 2012, and I already know they're making a game for that movie, so if they make The Amazing Spider-Man for the Xbox 360 Collector's Edition, I would want a nice Amazing Spider-Man statue... I would want an art book with that game. Uh, I don't really care about a soundtrack for a Spider-Man game. But I would also want um, maybe like a free comic book with it as well. And the Mega Man thing. Make it happen. <laughs> I'd like uh, uh, three statues of Jack. Jack and Dexter. For all three games. Yeah, for all three games. Like, how they look in each one. would be awesome. Did you answer, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we said Bioshock Infinite. Oh, right. Then, yeah. Sorry. I was trying to think of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's it. That's all the questions we have. Yeah, That was a lot of questions. That was a lot of questions. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Yeah. Seriously, keep them counting. 
I think that's my favorite section in this entire podcast is yeah. answering questions. You guys always come up with random, like, awesome questions. Uh, that's about it. You guys just want to end it here? It's kind of getting Let's late. Let's wrap it up. Something. Let's wrap it up. Let's put a ribbon on it. Let's wrap mm-hmm. that thing up. All right, guys. So that's about it. That is episode uh, 19 of the Press Start podcast. Um, yeah. where, where can our fine listeners find you, Dan? Our listeners can find me at youtube.com slash nostalgicdan1. You'll find all of my latest videos. I cover a wide range of videos. I'm really random, so definitely check me out there. I also have a Twitter page, which I do update a lot with gaming-related stuff, and that's Nostalgic Dan on Twitter. I have a Facebook page. If you search Nostalgic Dan, you can like my Facebook page there, where which I do update pretty regularly. And you can also follow me on twitch.tv slash nostalgicdan where you can watch me play some random games and just come in and chat with some awesome gamers and have a good, good fun time. So that is where my our listeners can find me. What about you, Cliven? Well, they can find me on uh, YouTube as uh, QuickFreeze4, and that's the number four. Uh, you could also find me on Facebook. If you search for Quick Freezes Game Room, you can like me on there. I do updates on my videos and, you know, what we're doing for the Press Start podcast. So, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. What about you, Techno? Where can they find you? Well, uh, they can find me at uh, youtube.com slash... Uh, Mr. Techno Squeak, it's two E's, not E, e and an A, uh, like most people would think. And I'm on Twitter. Um, it's same thing. So, yeah, if you want to follow me there, um, you can. That's it for me. Sweet. And uh, for you guys listening to this podcast, I. Uh, Obviously, you can find us on YouTube as Press Start Pod. You can find us on iTunes if you search for a Press Start Podcast. And you can find us on the AverageGamerShow.com. We have episodes on there put up by Cody, Don Don Raiden. And you can actually listen to them there or you can download them as well. And if you guys have any future questions for any future episodes, you can email us at PressStartPod at gmail.com. And we will answer them for the next available episode. Hey, whoa. Dude, we forgot to, like, introduce our guest. Oh, my God. I forgot to call him. What are you talking about? Shit. Wait. Oh, shit. James Rolfe. Where is he? Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot. Uh, I have him on Skype here, but I just, he totally slipped my mind, you know. Oh, well, eventually. We'll have him on again. All right, guys. (laughs) Well, we forgot our guest next week, so next week we'll have a guest. But um, as always, we like to thank you guys for the questions, all that stuff. Thank you for listening. And I want to thank Mr. Techno Squeak for being on the podcast. Yeah. Yay. Yay. And Nostalgic Dan. Yeah. Yay. And myself. Yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Eh, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, that's about it, guys. Yeah. So. Thanks for listening. Keep questions coming. We appreciate all the support. Passed over 200 subscribers on YouTube, so yeah, we appreciate it. We love all the new listeners. We love all the new questions. It's awesome. Bye, guys. I miss you all. I'll miss you. Bye. Bye. Until we meet again a week from now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Techno, explain your whole love affection for Amy the Hedgehog. Oh, my God. (laughs) Shut the fuck up.